what is up everyone hope you're all doing well now recently in our video we put loads and loads of tetras into our new 600 litre community aquarium and in that video we had an issue with biofilm growing or not growing but being on the top of the water and loads of you headed to the comments to ask what it was where it comes from how to get rid of it and all of those sorts of things and i didn't realize there would be many of you struggling with it but it is something that happens in aquariums fairly often so in this video we're going to do all of that we're going to explain biofilm on the surface of your aquarium how to get rid of it for good So if you've ever come to your aquarium and you've got that greasy sort of film over the top of it, almost like someone's poured salad dressing on top of it, you are honestly not alone. It happened to the best of us, to be honest. And there's loads of different things that can cause it. And there's a few different ways of getting rid of it. But first, we should probably start with what on earth is it? So the oil slick that you're seeing over the top of your aquarium isn't really oil in that sort of sense. It's what we call biofilm. Now, biofilm can be made up of a lot of different things. So it can be breaking down plants, it can be fats, it can be foods, it can be proteins. It can be a lot of different things that are breaking down in your aquarium and then sitting on the surface of your tank. The surface tension of the water keeps that layer there. It doesn't really mix well with water. So it just sits there and almost stagnates. And it's not a sign that your tank's wrong or something bad's happening in your tank, but it is a sign that something needs attention in your aquarium. And depending on the severity of it, it might need it quite quickly. So what in your aquarium is exactly gonna be causing this? Well, to be honest, Pretty much everything could be causing it, but most of the time, decaying plant leaves, uneaten fish food, waste levels, is especially prevalent in tanks where there's very little surface agitation, things like better tanks and planted aquariums. The other tanks that you do get it in fairly often is tanks with botanicals in, like this one. Now I know the reason that this has got a biofilm over the top at the moment and this tank's gone through some changes recently with adding more plants from setups that I've been shutting down and moving into the fish garage. So this tank's been sort of stirred up, moved around, the botanicals have been shifted and that just means all of those excess organics have come into the water and are now sitting on the surface. The other thing that you can actually find well causes it quite badly is frozen foods as the frozen foods thaw that's one of the hardest things i've ever said they release sort of proteins and then those proteins can go and sit straight onto the surface so if you're using a lot of frozen foods or oily foods or predatory fish things like you're feeding prawns and cockles and mussels to that can have a massive effect on the amount of biofilm you're getting on your surface so sometimes it's worth thawing your frozen food away from your aquarium and not just chucking it in as a frozen cube giving it a bit of a rinse in a fine net and then putting it in because that will get rid of a lot of that juice and liquids that surround them that could be causing your biofilm issue okay so maybe you're thinking well it looks bad on the surface is it actually that bad for the tank and its inhabitants and well the answer is yeah it can be in severe cases it can be well disastrous really it obviously stops oxygen from getting into the aquarium and it stops co2 from getting out of the aquarium again in thicker cases it's worse in thinner cases you might get away with it but with that happening, your fish can end up being sluggish and in bad cases, it can actually make them sick. Alongside a load of other things that can happen, it can trap dust and algae and make your tank smell a bit bad and smell almost musty and horrible. There are lots of bad things that a biofilm on your surface can cause. Now let's have a look at fixing it. Probably the quickest way is paper towel. Now you can just grab this stuff tear a piece off lay it flat on the surface and it'll absorb and sort of pick up that biofilm it's quite satisfying to do but as you can see in this tank it's really not gonna work long term because that biofilm is just coming back every time we take it off you can see it is just thickening back up so we need to get to the root cause of this and actually tackle that the paper towel method is good but it's not a long-standing thing. 
Now the next one is a bit of a game changer to be honest and that is just getting more surface agitation. So if you can angle your filter outlet up to the surface then that will start breaking it up and actually getting that biofilm into the water where your plants can possibly use it if it's a nutrient, your filter can deal with it if you've got something in your filter to catch it, but you can already see how that's actually broken up this biofilm and it's actually starting to process it. Now it doesn't necessarily need to be the outlet of your filter. You could get an extra pump on there to actually churn the water around and give you extra surface agitation. Or you could even get an air pump in there with an air stone and blast some bubbles through the bits of the tank that is then gonna again ripple the surface, break up that biofilm and stop it from forming. The next thing is to make sure your filter is clean. Now a clean and efficient filter will obviously have a higher flow rate. There will be more circulation breaking down that waste and churning the tank around. The other thing that you can find though is that even if your filter is running and it is powering around the water, if your foams are that blocked up, the water may be just literally bypassing it, going around the outside of the foams. It does happen. Once foams are blocked up and at capacity, water will find the quickest way and that might be around them. So once they are blocked up, all of that fish waste, all of that plant debris will be breaking down and releasing muck and proteins and and waste into your water, which in turn could be causing a lot of your biofilm issues. The amount of customers that would come in years ago and be like, my filter's still running absolutely fine, it's still fast, it's no problems at all, but they would open it up and it would be chocker block and they'd be suffering with algae issues or they'd be suffering with biofilm issues or health issues with the fish. The filter looked like it was running fine, it was still powering water around, but everything in there was so blocked up, the water was just passing around the outside of it. So even if it looks like it's running properly, it may be worth opening it up just to check. Now, if you want to fix it once and for all, you could get something like this. This is a motorized surface skimmer. So it's a little bit like an internal filter. You've got suction cups on the back of it. And this piece here floats up and down to the water surface and it will draw in water through these little turrets. Now this is an Awazi crystal skim, which I've used for years. It was actually, I think one of the first product reviews I'd done on the channel. And all it does is it sucks in water at the top, blasts it out the bottom and clears your surface. Now you can get them that attach to your inlet and outlets on your filters. Personally, I'm not a big fan of them. I always end up breaking them or fish end up swimming into them. So this one with its protective grills and then it's got a sponge down inside it is way easier and safer to run. Now what I'll do is so we can see this one running and to be honest, if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll have probably seen one of these surface skimmers on a uh, aquarium at some point. But we'll pop that one there and you can see how the top is floating to the water level and we can turn it on and that will start sucking in all of that surface scum. So with a flick of a switch that should turn on. Now we have got floating plants in this tank which is obviously a bit of an error when it comes to biofilm because it doesn't allow the biofilm to sort of break down. But you can already see how that thing is sucking in all the waste from the surface, pulling it in and then obviously going to be breaking it down and getting it into the water. Now it's obviously great to have that surface skimmer sucking all the muck in and getting rid of it and it almost looking like you've sorted the problem but in a way it's like sweeping the muck under the carpet. It's gone and it's out of sight but it's still in theory inside your aquarium unless you remove it. So the last step is what I tell everyone is good old fashioned water changes and tank maintenance. Making sure you're trimming dead leaves, netting things out that are not meant to be in there, not overfeeding, regular water changes, gravel vacuuming, all of those maintenance things that you can do in aquarium will remove the waste that is feeding the biofilm and ultimately feeding algae as well. This is sort of hand in hand, it can be both problems in one go so doing all those things will help you in the long run with just the cleanliness of your entire tank. Now a few bonus little tips is that fast growing aquarium plants can help and also hinder the biofilm issue so things like floating plants like we've got the salvinia on top of here can help it it will absorb the excess nutrients that can cause biofilms 
on the flip side to that, you've then got a load of floating plants that are stagnating the top of the surface of the water. So constantly taking out any excess plants and removing them, freeing up that water surface is going to be a good thing. That being said, with the same as plants under the water, fast growing plants are again going to absorb nutrients, going to help you try and break down anything that might be causing those biofilms. And I've probably already said it, no I've definitely already said it, overfeeding is a massive thing. Massive, massive, massive thing when it comes to algae and biofilms. So making sure there's no uneaten food, the fish are eating what they're eating in a short amount of time and yeah just be very very careful with feeding i can't stress it enough i honestly think there are more problems and more casualties from overfeeding than underfeeding in the aquarium world the other thing to probably mention is lidless and lidded aquariums lidless aquariums are great because it's actually allowing oxygen to circulate and letting sort of flow through it the problem is on the flip side of that dust and debris and things that are going on in the home can get in on top. I especially know this with having two Dalmatians and their fur is an absolute nightmare. But that is something to bear in mind with lidless tanks. With lidded aquariums, it's not so bad. You're protecting it from all that dust and all that debris and things like that. The only issue is because that lid is on there all the time and it almost builds its own little weather system and ecosystem inside and it can actually make it worse in a way so making sure you're opening the lids once in a while getting some fresh circulation and air through there can help i have actually seen it before in a customer's aquarium where i went and i opened up the lid and i put my arm in and the biofilm was that bad as i pulled my arm out a layer of green biofilm covered my arm and i essentially looked like the hulk just on the arm though and it stank and it was horrible and that was because overfeeding lack of water changes and just that humidity horribleness inside the lid had caused this weird weird horrible ecosystem so a quick recap that oily film is just biofilm made up of organic waste doesn't often cause a problem but if it gets bad enough and you don't notice it it can starve your fish of oxygen they can start gasping and well we know where that goes nowhere good the main key and the best advice i can give better maintenance more surface agitation a skimmer if you want one and smart feeding overfeeding is the bane of most aquarium shops lives because it causes more problems than it helps so i hope that all made sense i hope that cleared it up for you literally <laughs> that was awful terrible you can tell i'm a dad now um what was i gonna say hope you found it interesting hope it's been good as always, let me know in the comments what your tips and tricks are for dealing with biofilms and algae and things like that, because you never know, it might help another fish keeper not give up on fish keeping by what you write in the comments. Uh, so be nice, let me know your tips and tricks, and I'll see you all in the next one.